You are what I'm looking for. Today I'm going to be creating a gorgeous project with the Rose Perfume Stamperia Collection. I'm going to walk you through all the products that I picked up from Hollow Tree Hobbies, my favorite paper crafting store in Canada, and then we're going to create a project. So first up, I've got the 12 by 12 paper collection. This has 10 double-sided beautiful cardstock and both the cover and the backing have little cut aparts that you can use for your cards and journals. Next I have the rub-on transfers and then I also have a rose perfume stencil and I've got the cardstock collection and this comes with seven cards, five tags and one bookmark and I'll just quickly show you each of those. So this one looks like a postcard or journaling card. Same with this one, uh, and like a six by six or five by five, something like that. And then little tags and medium sized tags and everything is double sided. And the tags already have the holes punched out, so that's great. And then we have a bookmark and then we have some three by four little journaling cards, a three by four little card, and then a four by six card. I love the gorgeous color palette and the vintage roses. It's so pretty. Next we have the ephemera and there are two packages ephemera. These are adhesive backed. So you get all these gorgeous pieces. You get some frames, you get some beautiful ladies and some florals and just a bunch of random bits and pieces. So that's the first ephemera collection. The second ephemera collection I've got here has is more floral related and it's got some gorgeous pots and some vases and perfume bottles, a little treasure chest, just a bunch of gorgeous elements, beautiful florals. There's some sentiments in here, a couple that say dream, memories, little bits and pieces. Okay, and then next we have the the die cuts and these are chipboard elements and we got a bunch of beautiful things along the same theme. We have this beautiful album of roses wreath and then some little frames and pictures and tags and this beautiful vase with with roses in it and perfume bottles. And then I also have the 6x6 six six paper collection, and this is the exact same as the 12x12, 12 12, just shrunken down smaller. So this has some cutout pages, it's got some cutout tea cards and journaling cards. Actually, I don't even know what the difference is between tea cards and journaling cards, but uh, whatever, they're, they're cut aparts, and that's the collection that we're going to use to create this project. Okay, so what I've done is put all of the things inside of a 12 by 12 scrapbook bin and I brought it downstairs and was playing around on my kitchen table while I was waiting for a pizza delivery. And I decided to start cutting up the paper. I thought that this part would be simple enough where you could just cut up papers and I could come back and show you what I had and then we can start making this into a journal. So here are the scraps I have left over from the patterns that I chose. And I want to put this big chipboard element on the front of my book. So the first page I have here, I've cut this piece down to nine by 12 inches and folded it in half. And that's going to be the cover of my book. Now for the rest of the pages, I cut them down to eight and a half by 11 and folded them in half. I also have some really beautiful vintage ledger paper that I've trimmed down to be eight and a half by five. So it was just a little bit shorter. And then I also have some coffee dyed paper that I've slipped in here and that is also eight and a half by 11. And again, folded in half. And then the very center piece inside of this book, I messed up the measurements when I cut the first time and I thought that's okay, I could put that right in the center of my book. So I've got all these pages laid out the way I want them. And I wanted to add a few sheets of vellum into this book as well. I think it just 
vellum is very elegant and classy and I feel like this book really could use some of that. It'll mix in nicely and make beautiful pages inside of my book. So I ended up doing four sheets of vellum and I'm gonna put a sheet in front of each of the pattern papers. It just softens it a little bit and gives it a little bit more of an elegant look, kind of mixed up in between these distressed coffee dyed papers and stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert one piece of vellum over top of each of the pattern papers. And then once that's done, I'm gonna line everything up and I'm gonna separate the paper from the cover and I'll work on the cover in just a minute. But first I wanna clip all of my pages together so that I can bind my book. So I'm just using some binder clips here and I'm making sure that my paper is nice and straight and all lined up, making sure the spine of my book is nice and straight and that everything is going to come together nice and neat. So I'm gonna use four clips and I'm gonna use the Gail Augustinelli stitch. I love watching Gail's channel. She does all kinds of fun journals and pockets and tags and ephemera, and I just love watching her. She's just amazing. So hi and hugs to Gail. Okay, so I've got two more big binding clips, and I'm going to clip in my signature into my cover making sure that it's centered and lined up, and then I'll grab my book binding kit. I need a book all, and I have this little piece of foam here that I'm going to poke through my book so that it doesn't damage my work surface. I'm gonna grab my ruler here, and I'm gonna find the center of my book. I'm gonna grab a pencil and mark at the very, very center, and then I'm gonna go three inches up and make a mark at three inches and three inches down and make a mark. These three pencil marks, I'm going to use my book all and I'm going to poke a hole through all of the papers and through the cover, making sure that I get all of the papers and poked all the way through. And I'll do that for all three holes, making sure that I'm standing my all upright. I don't want it to go on an angle, I want it to come right through the very center of the spine. And then the last hole, and I'll poke that through. And now we're ready to start sewing. It's super simple. This is the easiest stitch ever. I'll link Gail Augustinelli's YouTube channel down below in case you've never seen this before. She's an amazing crafter and just so much fun to watch. So I'm gonna grab a needle and I'm gonna grab some wax thread. I'm gonna take my wax thread and I'm gonna pull out three lengths of my book. This is how much I'll need plus a little bit extra to make sure that I get my signature sewn in nice. So I'm gonna pull the thread and go one, two, three lengths of my book. I'll use my little snips and snip that thread. And then I'm going to thread my needle. I'm not gonna make any knots or anything. I'm just gonna thread the needle through the top of the wax thread, just so that I can pull it through the signature of the book. So I'll poke my needle through the center hole and I'll hold on to that end of the string and then I'm gonna come up through the top. I'll put my needle through the top hole, making sure I get through all of the pages, and then pull nice and tight. And then I'm gonna take that center string and pull it to the left and out of the way, and then feed my needle through the center once again. I don't want my needle to go through the wax thread, otherwise I won't be able to tighten my signature. And then I'm gonna take my needle and go through the very last hole. And then once that's done, I'm gonna pull everything nice and tight, holding on to that center string there. And then I'll slip my needle underneath the little loop there and then pull. And then I'll make a little knot and tie everything nice and tight and secure. And then once that's all in, everything looks good. It's nice and tight. And I'll tie a little bow in the center. Now you could double knot this, you could cut these away, you could do whatever you want with them, you can add little charms to the strings and things like that. I'm gonna just create this cute little bow and then snip off the excess and leave it laying the way it is in the center of the book. And then that's it, the signature is all sewn together and there's nothing left to do but decorate and have fun. I'll remove all of my binding clips and make sure that everything is in place. And then there we go, our book is now ready to have some fun. 
And this is where I'll use all of the ephemera and pieces and scraps to create things to go inside of it. So first I decided to go through the scraps that I had left over and decide what was going to be a pocket, what was going to be a tag, and sort of what I was going to do with these pieces. So these rose pieces are going to be tags. These bigger pieces, I'm not quite sure. I think I might make pockets with them. These two will also be tags or pockets, either one. I haven't quite figured it out. This one, I'm going to create a bookmark and I'm just cutting it down to eight inches and I'll keep that little scrap to make a small tag. And then this one, I'm gonna make a bigger tag with it. I'm actually gonna turn this into a little tag pocket. So let's start with the tags. I'm just gonna sort these out and put the pieces that I know what I want to do with and then the ones that I'm unsure, I'll just put them off to the side and we'll come back to them later. So these three I know for sure are going to be tags. Anyways, I figure I'm messing around too much. Let's just work on the tags. I've got all these sorted, I think, to what I'm going to do with them. And I'm gonna start by making some tags. I'll take the two pieces that are the same size. This is my favorite way to make tags that are symmetrical and match. So I'm gonna take two pieces that are the same size and I'll use my scissors and I'll cut away an angle on one corner. And then I'm gonna take the two pieces and flip one of them over. And what this does is create a little guide for me to cut away so that my tags are symmetrical on both sides and then they also match so they're nice and even and I get the desired effect I want. So then I'm gonna take this bigger one and I'm gonna turn that into a tag as well. And I thought maybe I could turn this into a little pocket. I lined up my little tags and I was going to make a cut, but I thought, that little rose there, I'd like to have that sort of stay on my cardstock and then turn the bottom up to create a little pocket. So I've decided to flip it around. So I'll just use my other tags that I have as a guide and cut away those corners. And there we go, we have three tags ready to rock and roll. Now we can decorate these tags and use the ephemera to elevate them. But for now, I'm gonna leave them as is. I'm gonna take this big tag and I'm gonna score at two inches along the bottom of the tag. And I'm gonna fold that little piece up to create a pocket. Now, I really liked both sides. I couldn't decide which way I wanted it, but I settled for that big, beautiful rose on the front. So I'll just use my bone folder, crease that fold, and then just add a strip of adhesive on either side to close this up and create a little pocket. I also wanted to add a little thumb notch here, and I probably should have done this before I added the, the adhesive, but I wouldn't have been able to do it once I had it glued down, so I wanted to do that before. Okay, so there we go. We have our little tag pocket, and we can slip something inside of there, whether it be a tag or a piece of ephemera, or a little journaling card or something, a little, little notepad or something to write on and it will fit perfectly inside of this cute little pocket. Super cute. All right, I'm going to punch some holes in the top of these tags. And then this piece is going to be a bookmark. I'm going to round all four corners on the bookmark and I'll probably decorate it with some ephemera, but I just wanna kinda of get my bases sort of laid out on what I wanna add into my book and what's gonna go where, and then I can elevate it even further with some of the extra bits and pieces that I bought. So I've got a little basket here and I'm gonna start adding all my ephemera that I make into this little basket so that I can have little things to dig through as I start decorating the book. So I'm just gonna grab my hole punch and I'm gonna punch a hole in the top of this tag and I'll punch all three tags at the same time so that the holes end up in the same spot. Okay, so these are ready to go. I'll drop those in my basket along with my bookmark. I'm just gonna punch a hole in the top of the bookmark first, and then I'll pop this into my basket. A lot, and I'm gonna also toss in that little chipboard element because I haven't gotten to the front of my book yet. So I'll work on that when the time comes. So for this little pocket, I'm gonna grab my little circle punch and punch out a decent sized thumb notch here. I decided I wanted to add this into the book. So I need to make sure that it's gonna fit so I'm just checking the book to see where I wanna put this piece. And if I wanna put it on one of the pages, I have to trim it down some. And I decided to not add pockets to the cover of my book. I thought that that might add extra weight to the cardstock because the, 
the cover is just cardstock. It's not anything else. So I figured I would just avoid that altogether. So I trimmed off a little bit of extra on this pocket and I'm going to add adhesive around both sides and the bottom and glue that down onto one of the coffee dyed pages. I think it matches nicely and it will decorate this page and, and I'll be able to slip something, a tag or a journal card or something inside of it. I'm laying it down on the bottom of the page so it gives me more space so if I want to put something tall in there it will fit without worrying about it sticking out of the book. Okay, so that looks good. I'm happy with that. Now I've got these two cards that were kind of sideways and I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with them yet but I decided to fussy cut that little pink border off. I thought that it would look nicer without that pink border and look more vintage and distressed, almost like a lace trim. I went ahead and I fussy cut out one piece and I really liked the look of it. And I thought I'll put one piece on each side of a piece of vellum. I went ahead and cut the pink border off the other one and then I'll glue these down to the corner of one of the vellum pages. So I'm just adding a little bit of adhesive down the bottom and one side and I'll add it right to the corners. So this is going to create a little tuck in the corner of my vellum page. I think it adds just a really pretty look and, and I like that fussy cut border. It looks really nice. So I'm going to add the other piece to the other side covering up any of that adhesive that you might see through the vellum. And then there we go. This beautiful sort of corner pocket is all ready to go. I love the way this looks. Now let's flip through. Now I've added two pieces to the front of this book and sometimes I can, I find myself decorating one side of the book. So I thought I'm going to flip to the other side before I end up decorating all of the front and nothing in the back. So I'm going to flip to the other half of the book so that I can make sure that I get stuff decorated there. So I've got this beautiful elaborate purple trim and I really like it. I'm going to add it to a piece of vellum and create a belly band, just adhesive on the top and the bottom so that I can slip something underneath it. And then I'm going to flip the page and I was going to cut off this scrap, but I wasn't sure if I was going to fold it over or what I was going to do. But then I found another scrap that was the perfect size to go over this page. So I'm just going to cut off this little extra purple piece here and then I'll glue down the other scrap piece and I'm just adding adhesive again at the top and the bottom so that the center is open and I can slip something inside of there. Whether I put a journal card or tag or notebook or note paper in there, haven't quite figured it out. I haven't gotten that far. So I'll get that glued on and there we go. Now I need one more something on the opposite side of the book. So I have something on a piece of vellum and a pocket on a page. And now on the back side, I have something on a piece of vellum. So I need to add one more thing just to make sure that the book is evened out and, you know, getting weighted down properly. I came across this beautiful floral background and it reminded me of wallpaper. So I grabbed this long piece here and I was kind of messing around with it and I thought maybe I'll make a double pocket. I cut it to five and a quarter and then cut the other piece at five and a quarter as well and then I have a little tiny scrap left over that I can use as a little tag or create like an embellished paper clip or something. Okay so I'm going to grab these two pieces and I'm going to punch finger notches one on the left of the first piece and then one on the right of the second piece and what I'm going to do is adhere these two pieces together to create a double pocket that I can glue down on the page. So I just want to figure out how I want this laid out and I want the sort of top of the first pocket to line up with that embellished trim on the second piece. I'm going to add a little bit of adhesive on the left and right, just up to that little embellished trim line. Okay, and then I'm gonna line this pocket up and glue it on right where I want it to be. And then I will add adhesive on the left, right, and the bottom and glue this down to my page. So therefore creating a double pocket where I can add something in each pocket. I'll get my double pocket lined up on my page, press in my adhesive, and voila! What's really cool about scrapbooking paper and making journals like this is there are no rules. You can make whatever you want. You can cut up paper, create pockets and flips and tags and all different sorts of things just 
to have fun and play with your papers. It doesn't have to be for any specific reason or purpose other than just to have fun and enjoy using the products that you have. So next I went and grabbed that pack of cards and I was just trying to flip through my journal to see where I wanted to put it and I thought maybe I could put it under the belly band but I didn't really like that very much. So I was messing around just moving things around and then I found a page that I thought that this card would go on very nicely. So I thought to myself I'm just going to leave it here. I'm not going to make a commitment. I'm just going to leave it on this page and then flip to the front of the book to find the opposite side where I could add another one of those cards so that my book was all even. So I've got the other, the opposite side of that coffee dyed page and I'm going to take this postcard and glue that down and I'm going to create pockets on both of them. But for now I'm not going to make any commitments because I was fussing around too much I couldn't decide what I wanted so I thought I would stop there. Instead of making rash decisions or pushing myself to be creative. I thought I had done enough for one day and I'm going to pause this project and tuck everything back in its little bin and come back to it when I feel inspired to continue to create. So that's it so far for the Rose Perfume Junk Journal. I'm having a lot of fun playing with these collections. I really enjoy the collections and all the bits and pieces that go with it and just having fun and seeing what I can come up with. The products that I used in today's video you'll find linked in the description box down below. Coming up on screen is a playlist of videos I think you may enjoy. Have yourself a lovely day and I will see you in the next one. Bye!